we will uh, discuss uh, some more frequently asked questions on uh, regression on this uh, in this video uh, the question um, the questions are like this the first question is uh, what is the problem of uh, heteroscedasticity uh, well the problem of uh, heteroscedasticity uh, refers to a situation when the residuals in a regression do not have uh, uniform uh, variance so this is one of the assumption in uh, the uh, least square regression that uh, the errors uh, should follow uh, uniform uh, uh, or should have uniform variance uh, well this problem arises when uh, there is variation um, uh, in the observations um, uh, across uh, there is a, uh, there is an uneven uh, variation okay and i'll talk about what is an uneven uh, variation across observations and it is mostly seen in cross section data where uh, you will uh, find that uh, the variation actually uh, uh, change with respect to uh, the observations so here is an example you can see that uh, the variation is lot less in the initial uh, period and later on you can see that uh, the variation is lot more so that's a typical case of uh, heteroscedasticity one of the example that we can take is uh, if you plot uh, uh, weight uh, versus height right weight uh, versus height now um, say for example um, if you increase uh, the uh, the age of uh, age of uh, the child from 10 to 15 you can see that the height increases from say um, 20 to 25 kg but if you increase uh, the age of the height uh, age of a child or if we keep on including more um, children in the age of uh, 15 to 20 and you see the uh, the um, variation in the weight is between 30 to 70 now you can see the uh, uh, well um, there is a 5 years, uh, years of dis uh, difference between the ages uh, but if you take the weight of the uh, children uh, the uh, the variation is lot more you know in one case the variation is only 5 the other case it's 40 so that means there is uneven variation in the observations um, so there are typical cases where the heteroscedasticity happen and it's primarily uh, a case of cross section data so how do you uh, you know um, and why do you really uh, worry why do we ensure, uh, we ensure that you know it doesn't uh, present in the data uh, it, it tends to give inefficient uh, regression results so you will get incorrect uh, standard error so incorrect standard error means uh, you know your standard error is either uh, underestimated or overestimated both are uh, bad you cannot interpret your results if you uh, have incorrect standard errors another indication uh, of heteroscedasticity is when you see the errors now the errors should be uh, uniformly distributed uh, across this uh, you know the um, the line right uh, so it should pass through uniformly and you will see that some cases you will see that uh, there is a deviation you know uh, you know some observations are uh, uh, lying far away from the other observations so you know chances are there uh, your heteroscedasticity uh, is present when um, you know you have uh, cases of outliers lying uh, you know on the both sides of the uh, this particular line so um, one of the best way to detect uh, heteroscedasticity is to uh, you know um, do this plot uh, you know create this plot and see how the observations are uh, um, distributed so the next question is how do you detect the problem of uh, heteroscedasticity and how do you correct uh, as i have said uh, graphical plot is uh, is a good one but there are also statistical tests which can be performed white test is the one which is performed the, uh, the bruce uh, pagan uh, test is also performed you can use uh, proc model in sas if you are using sas uh, to uh, come up with this uh, you know statistics um, so how do we correct uh, the heteroscedasticity um, there are uh, different ways but one of the way is to use uh, the weighted least square instead of the ordinary least square 
So the weighted least square ensure that it, it handles uh, or it is able to handle the, the change in the variation or uh, in the in your uh, cross section data. So uh, that's uh, um, that's important thing. The next question is what is the problem of uh, autocorrelation uh, in integration? So when error terms for one period is correlated with error terms in different period, we call this case as auto uh, autocorrelation, and this is a problem. We expect that that the errors terms should not be correlated, and this is a problem in time series data when we have taken data for uh, two or more time periods. So uh, you know if error t is correlated with error t minus one, then we say that uh, there is autocorrelation, or there should be some sort of correlation between the error uh, error uh, terms. So uh, what happens when there is autocorrelation and you go ahead with your simple regression? Well, you will, your standard error tend to be underestimated, which will uh, cause uh, problems in the statistical test. Your statistical test will not be valid. So this is uh, faced uh, with uh, data which is collected over time. So if you have taken data for cells data for you know uh, different years, uh, most likely your cells values will be correlated across time, right? Uh, correlated over the time. So you face problem of autocorrelation there. So how do you detect presence of autocorrelation and how do you correct uh, autocorrelation? Uh, most of the times we uh, will come across autocorrelation uh, of first order. So first order autocorrelation is something that is uh, that can be detected using uh, the statistical test known as Durbin-Watson test. So here is the Durbin-Watson test formula. Uh, you have error from uh, two different series, EI and I minus one. So uh, you are trying to see the AR1 autocorrelation. That means uh, it's a first order. So uh, the rule of thumb is that if the DW statistics or the Durbin Watson statistics is close to two, then there is no autocorrelation. Otherwise, there is autocorrelations. What if uh, the errors in regression don't follow normal distribution? So, um, and what tests do uh, do we use to test uh, for normality? Uh, well, the test of uh, hypothesis cannot be performed on the estimates if you uh, face error terms, uh, non-normal error terms. Uh, there is no issue with estimation. You can always uh, estimate. Uh, you can come up with your uh, OLS estimation, but uh, uh, but we cannot perform test of hypothesis uh, because test of hypothesis is totally related to the fact that the data is normally distributed, right? Um, so that if there is no normal distribution, then you cannot come up with a 5% or 1% uh, interval and uh, you know test uh, your parameters um, uh, with your p and t value. So all these things are related to normal distribution. So you cannot uh, really uh, do all these things. So how do you uh, detect? Uh, how do you find that uh, it's not normal or it's normal? So uh, the most popular one uh, are uh, the PP plot, the probability probability plot, or the quantile plot. Now here is an example of PP plot. Um, most software will give you this plot. So uh, there is a theoretical distribution of normal distribution, uh, and then the actual distribution of your data. So ideally, in a normal, if your data is uh, normally distributed, um, or your errors are normally distributed, uh, rather then um, you will you will see that the points will be lying on this uh, uh, particular line in the diagonal line only then it's normal if there is uh, points lying here and there then there is slightly uh, non normality like in this case you will see points are lying are lying on the upper side of the line so there is some kind of non normality there are also statistical tests available like kolmogorov's muir tests uh, uh, Sapiro Wilk test and Anderson Dalling test, which can also be performed to find out if uh, the uh, errors are normally distributed or not. Most of the times you will see that uh, if your variables, continuous variables are normally distributed, then automatically the errors will also normally distribute it. So that uh, needs to be uh, checked. Next question is uh, what are R square and adjusted R squares? Well, uh, anyone familiar with regression would know this. But uh, people often confuse with uh, R square uh, and uh, you know how to and when to use R square. So R square uh, tells us how well the model fits the data. 
so this is the first part of the answers but technically um, it it means something different technically it means it actually measures the percentage of variation explained by the model so you have uh, dependent and independent variable so you are modeling for dependent variable right or the variable of interest or the target variable so how much of uh, variation uh, 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 which is measured in terms of variance is being explained by your uh, uh, model that you have estimated so that's nothing but your r square always lies between 0 uh, and 1 sometimes it's negative uh, it cannot be negative though so if it is negative then there is something uh, seriously wrong with the model and the more it is close to 1 the better is the body uh, an adjusted r square uh, is, is another version of r square which penalizes for adding extra independent variables so we always want a parsimonious variable so what do we mean by parsimonious that means model with the least number of variables uh, so why we need least number of variables because uh, if you can achieve high r square with less number of variables then uh, it is easy to implement easy to interpret so that's a, a good model that is supposedly a good model so if you keep on adding more independent variables to the model the r square value uh, should actually go up ideally but uh, adjusted r square will uh, go down after a while because it penalizes for adding uh, additional uh, variables or 